No Fun, the Jen Kirkman podcast, season 11, episode 7. That is where you are right now. But that made no sense. This week's episode has kind of a bent of therapy and taking care of oneself. And so we're going to talk about how everybody's mad at Marie Kondo, who's given up on cleaning. When is it the therapist's fault when things aren't working and uh, talking about dumping therapists? I've got some personal stories on that. Trauma dumping. Is someone doing this to you? Are you doing this to other people? And there is um, a thing now where people are doing divorce registries, which I'm, I'm all for. And then some talk. I've got some uh, listener questions about ADHD stuff. And should you just go up to a friend and be like, I think you have ADHD undiagnosed. So that is on today's No Fun, the Jen Kirkman podcast. So yeah, everyone is mad at Marie Kondo. Now, I'm recording this just like a little bit ahead of time, like a little over a week. So this might be old news to you by the time you hear it, but I really didn't think it was, you know, this isn't breaking news. Like the president has nuked Russia. You know, if I talked about that two weeks later, you might think, you know, she really doesn't serve us when she records the podcast um, so far in advance. Actually, that example actually makes no sense. Wait, I can't get this thing to stop playing because that would be an example of, wait, I'm getting this whole thing backwards. Okay. Okay. The president nukes Russia, but I've been recording the episodes in advance, right? Okay, so the day the president nukes Russia, I have an episode come out that I've already recorded. And then I'm like, oh, no, I can't believe a new episode of my podcast is out. And I'm just talking about my favorite kind of jelly shoes. Meanwhile, the president's nuked Russia. Well, I'll talk about it next week. And then the next week, I'm talking about it. And you're all in your underground bunkers or you're outside because Russia's retaliated, of course, and you're outside getting radiation everywhere and you're, you know, tuning into the latest No Fun podcast as that's what you do after a nuclear holocaust. And you're like, Jen, we know that the president nuked Russia and that Russia retaliated. We know you're like a week old with this news. This is not fun to listen to. It's very frustrating you need to start recording the episodes closer to the date of release so that we can stay on top of things. But I feel like Marie Kondo giving up cleaning is not giving me that same, really, where were you when you found out that Marie Kondo gave up cleaning? I think you kind of find the article when you find it, and we've all got things going on. And I really don't mean to imply that we would nuke Russia first. I I. That's not a thing, but whatever. It's not a political podcast. Okay, I cannot get this thing to stop playing. Okay, great. So let's see what's going on. I think really what's interesting, <clears throat> pardon me. What's interesting is the reactions that people are having. I mean, the news itself is pretty like, oh, she had some kids and she doesn't spend all day organizing anymore. But people are really mad at her. There was a whole thing on Twitter. And these women are like, I looked up to you. It's like Marie Kondo didn't, I don't know, sexually harass a bunch of people and start a KKK march down the street. She's just too busy to clean and organize, which is what your problem is. That's why you needed her in the first place. You don't get all mad because now, now she's in a different place in her life. And you know that her giving up on cleaning is still so different than yours, you slob. Marie Kondo already has everything organized. She already has everything in her home that sparks joy and nothing in her home that doesn't. So if she gives up the day-to-day obsessive organizing that she never really did in the first place, but let's say that's all she means, it still looks great in her home. Now, maybe there's a baby bib on the floor, but In general, she's got no excess. She doesn't have 15 shirts from a concert 
you know, it from the same band and concerts over the years and some trophies from high school. She doesn't have all the shit that you have. So you getting mad at her, you're mad at yourself. You're mad at yourself that you bought her book, what was it now, five, ten years ago, and you never did anything with it, but you were going to. And then she announces that she's taking a step back from cleaning and you're all mad. Oh, big deal. You weren't going to do it anyway. Here's the thing. She's not even saying anything about her career. She's saying in her personal life, I'm not cleaning that much. Who cares what she's doing? I wish she'd never said this to anybody. Everyone's all mad at this nice lady. Anyway. So here's, here's the story. Um, Marie Kondo, as you know, if you're like, Jen, who are you talking about? She was that woman she's a, from Japan, Japanese woman, who wrote the book. Um, well, she had the TV show on Netflix called Tidying Up with Marie Kondo, and then she had a book called The Life-Changing Magic of tidying up. Wow, from 2011. Was it really that long ago? Did we just find out about it only five years ago? Or am I really thinking that the hype on her five years uh, was five years ago and it wasn't? Anyway, so she's a decluttering expert, right? So she, there's, they do this article, you know, it's all over, but the one I'm reading is from the independent.co.uk. So here's what happened. She welcomed her third child into the world in April 2021. She's 38 and her husband and her are also parents to some other kids. So anyway, now there's five people in the home. Marie Kondo says she's put organization and decluttering on the back burner and she started to embrace the mess of having a big family. She said, my home is messy, but the way I'm spending my time is the right way for me at this time, at this stage in my life, she told the Washington Post in a recent interview. She said, up until now, I was a professional tidier, so I did my best to keep my home tidy at all times. She said this through an interpreter. She said, I have kind of given up on that in a good way for me. Now I realize what is important to me is enjoying spending time with my children at home. She has a new book called Marie Kondo Karashi at Home, How to Organize Your Space and achieve your ideal life, which focuses on the Japanese concept of karashi. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Karashi, or way of life. She said in this interview, I will keep looking inward to make sure that I am leading my own karashi. So she had the um, KonMari method, which is basically separate your personal items into categories, clothes, books, papers, miscellaneous items, sentimental items. And the next step is to figure out which of your belongings, quote, spark joy in your home, which is a phrase that Marie Kondo famously used. So now she lives in California with her family. And yeah, so she does this interview. And I honestly think it sounds like her new book is about, okay, once you've decluttered your life, now how do you want your home to function? You know, she wasn't, I don't think she was ever saying everybody has to be this organizational psycho. That's for other things. That's for Instagram influencers and, you know, the home edit, those girls, that show on Netflix. Her thing was get rid of your crap. And if you're emotionally attached to it, figure out if it's an emotional attachment that you can move through and get rid of this thing, which you think you're emotionally attached to, but it's actually not causing you joy in your home and get rid of it. Or do you have an attachment to it because it sparks joy? Even if it's not from your great, great grandmother and it means a lot, it could be something stupid. Like for me, I have this sweater. I mean, it looks like a sweater. It has arms, but it's small and it's like an ugly sweater and you put it over a bottle of wine. It's just a little decoration and it says holiday hot mess. Now, it's one of my favorite things. And when I moved from LA to New York, 20 years of stuff in a two-bedroom condo, I realized how few things I really cared about. 
except for sentimental items and, you know, archives of stuff that I've done. But in terms of objects, I really could not get rid of that. I had to take it with me. You know, stupid things like that. So it, for some reason, it sparks joy. I have to be honest, though. I think I accidentally gave it away because I can't, I don't know where it is right now. I mean, it's not the holidays, so it's not out, but I, well, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so I think her thing is more, once you've decluttered, now that you're living in your space, how do you want to spend your time? Because most people with a lot of clutter and they can't really decide how to organize their home, they spend a lot of times losing things, finding things, repairing things, whatever, stepping over things, moving things to the side. So once you don't have to do that every day and you can just do what you want in your home, are you going to spend time with your kids or do you want one less hour with your kids so that you can do a load of laundry. You know, I think that's what she's saying. I remember I met Susie Orman. Guys, not to brag, I've met a lot of celebrities in my life. And she came to Chelsea lately and we did this sketch with her. And I don't even remember what it was. You know, Susie Orman, the money expert, she famously has one pair of earrings. She's really not into buying and wasting money. And well, I was leasing a car. I always leased a car instead of purchased. I'd purchased once and I found that it didn't really work for me. And I've done everything from purchase a cheap car with, hey, here's five grand and now it's fully mine or purchased from a car company where you have a payment. And I decided to lease because I'm incorporated. And when you lease my personal corporation, which is just me, there's more breaks on that. No pun intended, but more uh, perks. Like I can write some stuff off through my corporation because I would use my car for, at the very least, if I was driving to a gig or driving to the airport to get to a gig or, you know, whatever. But also when you lease a car, you turn it in every, I think it's two years or two to four years and get another one. So you're always paying a payment. But the thing is when you buy a car and make a payment, the minute it's off the lot, it's worth barely anything anyway. So as Susie Orman explained to me, we're getting fucked up the ass no matter what with cars. Cars will always be a source of money, not money trouble, but, but, but cars will always be a frustrating source of having to give money to something. So in other words, if leasing works better, because now for me, when you own a car, then after five, 10 years, things start to break, you have to fix it. All of a sudden you have this, what I call, a surprise payment on something. Oh my God, the muffler fell out. I like a leased car because I have it for two years. I think it was two years. I have it for two years and I know that nothing is supposed to break down. And if it does, it's fully covered. So I know for a fact, I'm never spending more on this car than the whatever hundred a month I'm paying to lease it. And that's just how it is, you know, and I can afford it and it's not keeping me from saving. It's not keeping me from doing things I love. Great. That works for me. And it makes me feel safer as a woman on the road alone. Maybe I'm driving down to San Diego. I'm driving home at one in the morning. I don't want to take a risk that the muffler's falling out and I'm by the side of the road with no muffler. And, you know, there's monsters and rapists everywhere. So the, and Susie said to me, that is an example of using your money for something that may seem wasteful to others, but it makes sense with your lifestyle. She also gave me permission to rent and said, with your lifestyle where you are never home and you don't want to deal with this, you don't want suddenly things breaking or you're on tour. What happens if you're in Europe and this breaks down? And then she said, and if you ever stop touring, if you want to use your money for travel, it's best for you to not own unless, you know, listen, you have $50 million, you can do it all. But so anyway, her thing was we have money to pay for things, necessities, bills, but if we have any left over, it's, it's there to support our enjoyment of life. And so put it where it allows you to enjoy life. So if you have to rent because owning would actually decrease the value of what you do in your spare time, then don't own. And you know what I mean? It does, it goes against the conventional wisdom of buy something and have equity. That's kind of not a thing anymore anyway. But anyway, so I think that's Marie Kondo's thing is once you get all this shit out of the way, how do you want to spend your time? And she's like, I want to spend my time with my kids. Everybody's on there like, she's a fraud. Americans really can't grasp the subtlety of certain 
things, right? Like her whole thing was emotional. Because if you ever watched that show, I actually didn't like Marie Kondo's show. She seemed like the sweetest person in the world and she's fine and she's a delight. But I got everything. I didn't really read her book because I feel like I don't hold on to things anyway. So everything in my place does spark joy and I get rid of it the second it doesn't. So I don't have that issue. As you know, I'm calling my neighbors, come down and take my things. But I think I did read her book for some reason, but I got everything I needed to know out of the book. I didn't need to watch the show, but I watched it anyway. And it would depress me because she's not there to do the sexy. And now here's your new makeover. Or now here is all of your cereal in see-through clear bins with, you know, blah, blah, blah. So she would basically come over, help you throw out everything. And, oh, oh, my husband, no room for clothes for him in my closet. And then once she helps this woman clean out her closet, realizes, oh, I only wear these 10 things. Okay, great. So now she's got 10 things on hangers and this would make me completely mental. They weren't all matching hangers, all plastic hangers that are white, all black hangers that are velvet. Nope, just rando, like rando hangers that she kept from the dry cleaner. Oh, I hate that. No wire hangers. Not even, I'm not even trying to be that. I'm not even trying to be mommy dearest. I just have wire hangers, but have all the same everything. I can't stand the eyesore of mixed types of hangers. And like, oh, I've had this one since college. It makes me cuckoo. So on her show, she's not there though to say, now you need all matching hangers. All she came to do was help you throw out your t-shirt from your softball team in high school. Now your husband has room for his clothes in your closet. Everybody happy. Except Jen Kirkman watching it going, the closet looks like shit. Like, why is there one wood hanger in one wire? I can't handle it. But people would be crying. I'm so happy. You've cleaned out my life. And she leaves. She's done her job. And I'm miserable because now everything looks sparse and just not curated, right? So for me, not for me. The one thing I hate though, this is this new thing. I, I follow a ton of home decorating things on Instagram. And this new thing, it, it is so annoying to me is everything has to be out of its original container and in something else. Now I have that at home. I have oil and vinegar in these glass containers that say oil and vinegar. It's cute. I like it. Whatever. My hand soap says hand soap. It's it's a glass thing I bought. I got these things at West Elm. Okay. But in terms of laundry detergent, I have, you know, my washer and dryer are in this closet off of my bedroom. It's very neatly stacked, but I have the detergent there that I can grab and whatever. But people with a bigger home, I mean, I'm in a small apartment in Brooklyn, but people with a bigger home that have a proper laundry room, they've got these big glass jugs, almost like, um, you know, a thing with a spigot, like a water jug. And they have it there and it says, you know, they've put their label maker label on it and it says detergent and they pour the detergent in it and then they use the spout to, to do what? I don't know, because then you have to put a little cup in under it, then pour that into the washing machine. It's too much. And then when, how do you clean those tubs? I mean, I'm assuming they get ugly looking after a while and like soap caked in on the, it's too, it's too it's too much. And they do all these little decorating. And the new, the thing I hate is the random rope. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's this decorator thing. Oh, I'm going to put a tray down and there's going to be a vase on top of the tray and then a candle and then toss this rope thing with wood balls on it. Just that, as decor. Oh, put that there. No, st- what are you doing? That's not a thing anyone uses for anything. <laughs> it's fine. I- it, I, it makes me completely insane. I see it all the time in home decorating stuff. But now they've now there's this thing where we've got to make the laundry corner and make the laundry room look nice. And I'm all for that. I want it organized AF. I mean, for me, I would just hide the bottles of things in a in a closet. But and I'm all for putting a little lamp in the laundry room. Oh, I want it as cute as can be. But I don't need all the extra stuff. Like now they have a little tray in the corner with 
yeah, all kinds of weird objects, like the wood thing with the beads on it. And like, I don't need tchotchkes in the laundry room. I'm going to go insane. I just need the basic stuff that we need. And the new thing I see on Instagram home stuff all the time is the coffee bar corner. Bitch, no one is doing this, okay? And it's like, then you pull this out and that's where the coffee machine is. And it's on this unsturdy thing, but it looks cool because you can pull it out and then hide it. No, no. And believe me, I am queen of let's hide this. I need everything to look nice. Trust me. This is not, let's just have everything look like shit, but it's too much. It. I don't want my home to look like an actual coffee shop. And they have this little corner and they're always advertising those Keurig things where you put the pod in, which is so bad for the environment. And you throw that and there's a little area and you have your, you know, this pod for these coffees and that, and then all the mugs are out in the open. Like, what are you doing? This is ridiculous. Nobody can live this way. Maybe people do. I don't know. But there's a lot of that going on in the Instagram influencer world of home decor. And I'm not about it. So anyway, all these Americans are going crazy because Marie Kondo is taking care of her kids instead of organizing. And yeah, there was an article in salon.com. People were calling her a fraud. Um, somebody wrote on Twitter, she admits she's kind of given up on tidying. Where's the official apology to those of us who she influenced to make our clothes into little envelopes while we had three kids? Well, get, over, get over it. Maybe she's still doing that. Maybe she doesn't even think that's a big deal. She's like making her clothes into envelopes while she's feeding her kid, but she's just saying like every once in a while she lets something fall to the ground. Oh, why do you need an apology? You should be happy your clothes are in envelopes, folded like envelopes. But everyone, I can to say this, motherhood, when did it become victimhood? Everything, I know motherhood's hard. I don't know if you guys noticed, I didn't have kids, too hard for me. So I know it's hard, but can you just like, Instead of like whining about how it's hard, can you kind of like brag about how it's hard and be like, oh my God, you know what I did? I folded my fucking clothes like envelopes and took care of three kids. Don't be like, why did I do that then? Like, just stop it. Stop it. I need everyone to stop it. I want to write a book about how to be a mother from someone who isn't one. Would that outrage the world or what? Anyway, so leave Marie Kondo alone. She's a nice Japanese lady who tried to help Americans. And like, as always, we're dicks. We're fucking dicks to anyone that helps us. And we don't truly understand what she was trying to help us with in the first place. All right. This episode will continue on Patreon.